Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today uh, we've got Steve Evans in here uh, who's going to talk to us about some of the UAD stuff. Now we know that UAD uh, just came up to 9.8 release, which was the 480 and various other plugins. We're going to rewind to 9.7 because there's some mm. interesting channel strip stuff that kind of went a bit under the radar, right? I think so. The Century channel strip. Right. Yeah, that's what I want to look at today. So uh, it's basically a collection of input processors, which uh, for those of you who perhaps don't know, uh, the Apollo, certainly the Apollo Twin and the series and some of the other Apollos give you unison mic preamp um, adjustment, which is a kind of, it's, it affects the electronics of the mic preamp that's plugged in, that, that's controlled by the plug-in. It's the, it's the impedance specifically, I think, isn't it? It, it talks to the whole, it talks to the hardware completely. I mean, it's, um, so it goes, in, it goes in right at the top of your, of your uh, strip in the UAD console. And um, yes, if you want to, you can control the, um, the knobs themselves with the controller on the Apollo Twin, certain, certain ones. So you can do that. And actually, if I click the, if I click the, the pad in here, you know, I can see the pad go on right. there. I can hear the relays. So you're, you are actually talking to the hardware as well as adjusting the plug-in on the way in. So you get that kind of tactile. Yeah, and, well. but then also the actual the uh, impedance of the electronics in the unison affects the sound. So if you yeah, plug, you are changing the circuitry. If you plug a guitar in, it, it adjusts the impedance. If you plug a ribbon mic in or a condenser mic, it, it kind of auto senses and knows how to match it to to best emulate the hardware. But this isn't actually an emulation of anything specific, is it? No, it's not. It seems to be UAD's own concept, and um, I think what they've done is kind of cherry picked a few ideas from, from some different stuff. Yeah, and um, and given us their own their own kind of unique thing, um, which which is really quite simple, right? But is also at the same time it's very powerful, and it's not the kind of plugin that you might initially get very excited about. But what what I love about it is the fact that because it's you can also use it as a plugin in your mix after the event. But what's been a kind of revelation to me um, in looking into this is that when you use it with its with its unison in its unison um, capacity right from the off so you're so you're kind of coloring and controlling gently everything that happens on the way into your session it's just amazed me how much more um like a final mix you can end up with right quickly right i, should, I guess we should point out i mean steve you know does a lot of production he's got a, a facility commercial facility which he uses all the time uses a lot of universal audio stuff but mostly on the DSP side, not on the this. So this sort of Apollo side of things is, new, is this is new. new this you. is new to me. I run Pro Tools and I've got I run Prism interfaces. So and, and I go to other studios and I record stuff. So hopefully I can sometimes use some of the real hardware. But most of the time there's not not enough of what you'd like. So we, I record flat and clean and kind of maintain my options for right. later on, like everybody does. And um, and I and yeah, I'm a huge fan of UAD plugins. I use them all over my mixes. But this is the first time I've had a chance to test out this Unison thing right. and actually color my signals right on the way in from the office a new thing to me and, it, and it's kind of what everyone used to do and it's something that I've got out of the habit of doing and almost become a little bit frightened of because I've become a victim of this kind of decision deferral stroke <laughs> option paralysis kind of disease that's kind right. of infected music production. It's interesting well so let's take us through the actual kind of elements of the uh, century channel strip then. So we've got an input stage an equalizer a compressor and an output. Simple right. as that. And on the preamp, we've got the basics of everything you'd need. You've got high and low level input, so you can accommodate either low level mics like ribbons or dynamics, or high level output condensers. Um, choice between mic and line, uh, low frequency roll off, reverse phase, and a pad if you want to pad it down. Interesting they don't put 48 volts on the uh, front panel there, isn't well, it? I it's, guess it makes know, sense. I'm, I'm frightened enough with just actually, I mean, you know, one of the one of the things, if I had a wish list with the Apollo, I, I, I think I would add a kind of are you sure option. To you 48 know. volts. Yeah, because I was I wanted to actually plug in my 4033A ribbon to, to try this out. But I was just, I was still slightly scared that I might accidentally press the 48 volt button. So, yeah, so, you know, there's right, a good well, job. Good, me, yeah. okay. good job it's not on there. But um, so, so there's, there's everything there. And, and the, um, this is where you get a lot of your drive from here, the input level on the mic amp stage. And, and um, that's like emulating the burn of the, uh, yeah. the tubes, right? So, you're, so, so it's, it's, it's emulating a valve. This is the, the whole thing about the Century. It's a, it's a kind of valve situation. And right. the whole point of it is to help you get the color and the distortion of valves. So we're driving the signal as if we were driving valves on the way in. And then equalizer is pretty simple, three band, top, middle, and bottom, sweepable mid. 
Um, fixed 110 hertz down the bottom, fixed 10 hertz at the top. So pretty old school. Kind of broad, pretty musical. Um, the mid range is, is narrow enough for you to kind of go and take a problematic honk out of an acoustic guitar if you want to. Um, and it's broad enough for you to kind of like give it a little bit of high mid presence. Or it's cut. interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, a lot of the uh, valve, get, you know, the kind of classic input stuff is quite basic because I guess they're assuming you're going to be putting kind of you know, um, Matt Monroe or Frank Sinatra through it rather than, you know, somebody who's singing down a megaphone. You know what I mean? It, it, so there, there's an assumption that your input source, you, you would use another plugin for more forensic kind of cut and, and fixing problematic inputs. Yeah, I, I, but those are kind of, those are the kind of plugins you tend to use on a mix, is, yeah, it, right. is those kind of, you know, those kind of things. I think, I think when, you're, when you're tracking, what's nice about this is you can very quickly go, right, okay, do I want to take, do I want to, do I want to filter the bottom end? You know, is it is it a bass drum? Is it a bass guitar? You know, no, yeah. right, cut the bottom end then. Let's just yeah. solve that problem right from the off. You know, phase is great. Um, I hate it when you haven't got a phase flip option on a, a mic pre. It's so essential, right. you know, and not all of them have. Um, and, the, and the EQ is just general. So you can very quickly and intuitively, you know, uh, and, and they've chosen not to, not to include the, um, the EQ knobs as part of the um, oh, unison control, control thing is that they, they, you know, you've got the uh, you've got the two level controls and then the output. Actually, I wouldn't have minded if if I could just have a yeah. get get hold of those knobs as well, just to kind of play Maybe tweak. Play tweak. If you're playing, if you're working on your own, like I've been doing with this, you're just playing a guitar. It's easier just to reach out and, and do that rather than get hold of your mouse and do that. So well, I'll, I'll, you know, I wonder why they didn't allow you the chance to hop. So next those. thing is the compressor leveler, which is Opto. And our Opto compressor yeah. levelers there, things like LA-2A, uh, 1176, is that Opto? Yeah, I mean, the famous ones, LA-2A, um, the LA-3A, 1176, Opto compressors, um, which, uh, which amazed me when I first found out how they worked, which I thought was amazing. There's a, there's a light bulb. There's an, actually a light bulb in there. You send a signal in, a light bulb gets brighter compared to how that signal is. There's something that's, that, that looks at the, the brightness of that light bulb and makes decisions about your gain, you know. And because there's a kind of lighty kind of lag going on, you know, you happen to get a very kind of musical compression out right. of it. And it varies, um, you know, you, it varies for the LA-2A is, is, you know, either fixed at uh, kind of four to one ratio or it's kind of an infinite to one ratio. So it's either a limiter or compressor. Um, that has a very different characteristic to the 1176, which is kind of super fast, grabs everything if you want it to straight away, super fast relief. Probably using an LED rather than perhaps a, a neon lamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, are you getting all of that from this from this knob? Well, Does it actually scale through that? It, it's in a way, it, it, there's a, it's, there are definite sweet spots you can find. There's a lot of difference between um, Oh, I can't grab hold of that one either, can I? So that would have been nice to have that yeah. as well, you know, because um, particularly with this one here. Because you get the sweet spots a bit. Yeah, easier. I mean, there was a lot, and I found myself a lot working in this particular area here. It starts to bite here, and it sounds very LA-2A. So, so what I mean about LA-2A is that kind of it allows a bit of, the, if, if you're sending something to it that's got a bit of a thump, it maintains a bit of that. Lets thump. the transients through. Yeah, it kind of lets the bottom bottom end part of the transients through as well, and then um, and the release is the release is quite gentle. Um, as you get to here, it starts getting a bit more aggressive, and by the time you get round here, actually you're kind of you're really digging in, and you're getting a lot of uh, a lot of room back right. from, brought up from around, and it's more much more eleven seventy sixty around here. So it's kind of almost three different compressors according to where you are. Well, that's handy. It's brilliant, actually, and um, so you've got you've got all you need here, really, to kind of get a bit of basic control and make some basic decisions on your sound on the way in, you know. And if you want to, you can really get quite filthy dirty with it. So I guess we should have a listen because you record you you recorded a session. I mean, treating this as essentially like a mobile recording system. Yeah, and um, we've got a couple of things here. You record your. Uh, the, you've got the Hoff here. The little <laughs> David Hassel Hoff, the bass. There he is. Lovely. So a and, bit um, of bass. Yeah, I mean, I I just took this away with me while I was travelling, and I had my acoustic guitar with me, a little Casio keyboard, um, someone else's bass, and um, and just started getting into the the channel strip. So I made up. I, I just I just did what I normally did when I'm kind of demoing up or writing, and um, and and this was great actually because I got much closer to. A final kind of sound than I normally do going through that process. Right. And and you know I didn't, 
I got close to that process without having a ton of plugins on the session and introducing some of the problems that you get when you start piling on plugins, latency increases, you, you know, MIDI kind of functionality. So have you got the session? Is that a Pro Tools session? Yeah. Yeah, so I started off with this, um, just starting off with plugging in my acoustic, having a little strum. And, it, and, and I had the, my mic in front of me, which is a 67, not a U67. How will your dawn break? You got a bit of reverb there running. Bit of reverb, there? that's the that's AMT. That's running on the DSP as well. Yeah, so this is all. Um, now you know I'm gone. It's vibey, isn't it? So it's just, it's really nice just to have the mic there, the guitar, and sing, and, and play that back and, and hear, well, there we are. There's a guitar and a vocal. It's fine. And is this processed through the century, or is yeah. this dry, right? Okay. No, this is, this, is, this is through the century. Now, so if I jump across to the, to the dry version, which is this. How will your dawn break? You can hear it more on the acoustic, can you? The acoustic you know comes to gone. life. I guess you added some air and sparkle to that. How will your dawn the break? So there's the top end. There's that. There's that 10 kilohertz band at the top. There's there's some gentle compression. Quite a bit of drive on the mic amp because there, there is you know there's a little bit. Of... How will your dawn break? There's a tiny bit of distortion in in that voice. It's not completely clean. And and I but I just but that's like quite the, nice. Isn't I it? like that's the sound that, of it. Yeah. Well, well, I just I just turned it up. A bit of and, corner until it sounded right. You yeah. know, that's the And so the, um, the two processes, one is recorded via the Apollo. What's the, what, is the other one recorded via the Apollo dry? Or is yeah, that so, so what we used was this um, radial JS3. So mm -hmm. I plugged my 67 in here and took two identical signals out. Right. And then signal one went into input one of the, um, of the UAD. And output two went into uh, channel two. And um, channel two is where we have the um, Sentry plugin. Right here, so I processed that one. So I recorded them both each time. So I've got I've got a duplicate of the sessions here. One is recorded through the Century Channel, and this one's recorded just through the at um, the same time, at, so simultaneously, the same performance, same, exactly the same performance. Yeah. So we can make an, a, a judgment because the the mic amps on the um, Apollo are great. They're really good, and the and the um, the A to Ds are really good too. Right. So there's nothing wrong with it. I think what we're, what we're talking about here is is um, how much is to be gained by not not trying to be clinical on the way in? Recording vibe rather than recording mixed vibe. vibe. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So you know the, the the difference that it makes just on the acoustic and the vocal. How will your dawn break? Because as we know, with the with the console, um, I can very easily just add some um, reverb on there, which I did. Um, the EMT. So I've just, just this very minute, reached the um, limit of the plugins I can have because I've got a ton of them on the mix. But I was recording, I set the mic up with the Century Channel, dialed in a bit of distortion, a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, then put some reverb on it, put my headphones okay. on, and then I'm playing. And actually, with that kind of, with that treatment on it, it's much more inspiring. I sound much more like what I would hope it would sound like in the end. So we just saw that error message uh, saying that we were maxed out the DSP, but that's with this whole mix on it. This is a uh, Apollo Twin Quad. How many, how much grunt does a century strip take? Do you know what? That's a good question. We should have a look really and see how many we can load up. Okay. So we, clo we closed the Pro Tools session, so we're just gonna add a strip in. So there's a 5% sort of residual amount there. So century, there's one. So that's about 7%, 7% of the DSP. Yeah. So what would that make? You get 10, you could get 10 channels in there on a quad without any other uh, effects going on. Yeah. We'll just double check that. So yeah, 19%, uh, 12%. Yeah, we went from five to 12 to 19. So it's about 7%. So it's not the heaviest by any stretch. No, it's not the heaviest. But you'd, but you'd struggle, you know, if you wanted to do a 16 channel uh, um, recording with ev that across everything, you, you, you'd need a bit more grunt than that. Yes, I think, I think you'd, you want an additional rack of, of Apollo-ness yeah. with more inputs and more DSP for sure.
and make so them, I mean, how much how much gain and drive can you add before you know? I mean, that's the other thing. I heard some other examples because this tune's got some great dynamics in it, and you you were just effectively working with you know two or three instruments. Yeah. So um, I, I, whereas um, normally I would imagine I would say to myself, okay, well maybe in this section here we'll put some distorted guitars on. I haven't got anything with me, but um, you know we'll deal with it later. So uh, I just decided to really hammer the hell out of these guitars. And these are just acoustic guitars with a mic input that you're driving hard, right? Yeah, so so here's a here, here's a pair of these. Right, so that's now. Okay, so that's the guitar's neat. <laughs> okay, um, this is the guitar's um, driven through the Century Channel. So you've dropped, you've dropped some top end off there. Not really. Uh, sorry, uh, bottom end off there. Yeah, a, a little bit, yeah, and just really driven it. And then I've put another channel on just for good measure. So if you want the... Interesting. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's it, it's just the dirt that it happens to make. I did the same on the bass as well. It's nice. It's nice. I mean, this it's is, got a it's got a sound to it, hasn't it? It's got a sound. This is the thing, and it was exciting to me at the time. I mean, when you're writing music, you want to be excited about it. So the other, without the century. That was just driving the mic out. It's okay, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's fine, but it's not this. No, there's all sorts of great stuff going on there. So I was getting excited, and much more excited than I usually get when I'm out with a mobile setup, just kind of trying to get some ideas down and thought, oh, you know, I've got a couple of hours on my own, let's do some writing. Right. You know? So um, you can really, you can really, um, you know, abuse this, abuse this thing. And in, and in that situation, it would have been very much like this, you know. Probably that was backed off a little bit, to, so I wasn't kind of driving. Right. But, but actually, I mean, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll just totally square off the inputs as well, you know, because that'll give you a nice sound. And, That's um, actual I, digital clipping. Yeah, right? yeah. I, it doesn't matter, you know. If it's, it's interesting. Sounds, it is interesting it you say this good. because I mean, you listen to a lot of older vintage recordings, and the, the the sort of the technical aspect of it is kind of shocking. You know, it's distorted to hell, especially Motown stuff and the Philly stuff. It's like really distorted, yeah. terrible. Kind or you of, listen to Barry Gray and the Thunderbirds theme tune, and or, or, you know, and those kind of the, the theme music to the Avengers, and or, or the, the way that those orchestras. Sound. It's like an orchestra through a distortion pedal, you know. I suppose that in Wonderful. many ways, you know, this stuff was a lot more forgiving. So, you know, okay, it, it might have been misused by accident. I didn't realise the orchestra was going to get that loud, or this wasn't supposed to happen, or I don't the person know stepped it. closer to the mic than they originally it's just were. How it, it's just um, how it sounded. It I, I, think, right. I think you just put it through that stuff and kind of turn it up, and that's just how it sounded. Right. And, um, and of course, we got used to that, and, um, and it, does, it does sound great, and um, things do sound... Great when they are when they are distorted and and this this whole the ability to kind of record in a pristine fashion with super high end A to D converters and um, you know is a fairly recent thing because up until now sound recording by definition of the fact that all the equipment was analog there's always been some kind of color to it I mean even you know super high end analog is pretty clean but it still does something. You know. Well, just tape saturation at the What's, very least. I mean, it, does, it, it yeah. does It does. lovely stuff and the cumulative, effect, even if it's not doing much on an individual channel, the cum cumulative effect of right. it over a mix is massive, you know, and it's what a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to kind of get out of their digital recordings now. And it's what, it, it's what a lot of plug-in manufacturers spend a lot of time shouting about how their, their products can help it sound as if it was recorded on analog, right. you know, yeah. because it sounds good. So, I mean, using this, I mean, the, you were... Uh, Obviously, looking at this for us, so you were trying to stick to just using this on the record channel, input only. Just that that's was the it. I, I, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just do one of my little songwriting sessions, but I'm going to use this on everything on the way in, see what it's capable of. Um, so I decided I've 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 done some hand claps. I've done bought in some little timpani well, drums. Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen to see I'll show you. So actually, the timp is quite nice to hear um, what's happening with the compressor. So this is just a like, sample instrument that you're using. Yeah. 
So that's with the Century channel. This is the this is the neat Timp straight out of the plug. Sort of sounds further away, doesn't it? It sounds further away, yeah. And the, the, the oh, it's more dynamic, and there's more transient on it. Okay. But I wound in a little bit of bottom end. Right. Here. Yeah. And um, and in and in the mix. And actually, I'll also show you that this is a, you know, have a listen to the hand claps, okay? This is a great example of, of how clean isn't necessarily right. right. So, so I multi-tracked a bunch of hand claps myself, rather than going to the, the, the hand clap library and yeah. kind of doing, the, doing my sample thing. Yeah, and it never sounds right. We, um, we always try and do the real thing. So I multi-tracked myself doing a bunch of hand claps and, um, and that sounds like this. Sounds like you're flipping through a deck of cards. Sounds like flipping, yeah, it, it doesn't sound like hand clap, does it really? It's, 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 it's hopeless. So um, going through the Century Channel each time and um, adding a little bit of distortion, a little bit of compression, um, bit of, bit, a bit of kind of 2, 3K, a bit of top end. So again, bigger forward, you've got a bit more, there's, there's more room in there. There's more well, room. It? it sounds more like something alive. Yeah. And then uh, presumably you've got some verb and so, whatnot. So with a little bit of reverb on there. Oh, a lot of reverb. A lot of reverb. Oh yeah, but actually a lot more than I thought I needed. I put some on and then realised that it was about a third of what I actually right. needed. I'll show you the effect in the mix in a second. This is the, this is the, um, the, the, the kind of clean claps again. It could, could work. Could it's... work. Yeah, that has a bit more. More squash. And I've actually squashed them further. I've put another channel on there as well. Put the top end on there. So the, the, the effect of the, uh, the timps and the claps together. Yeah. And that's, that, that's the same section of the song where all those um, filthy guitars are as well, so you get a good old... Don't you need me, do you need me? Oh yeah, I can hear the buzz of the guitar. What's that? Is that like a sort of little beatbox or something in there? That's my that's my drummer, Casio. So that's this guy. <laughs> that was the, Is that, that was an the, MT something or other? <laughs> One six five. Ah, a classic. <laughs> yeah. There's something about those symbols, isn't there? And is this processed as well? That's that is the one that's that's the neat version. So this, I mean, actually, this this is a good chance to to talk about when you can you can parallel process something. So, um, this is this is just the neat Casio. Right. Okay. okay. Um, this is what it sounds like through. Um, A bit more crunchy. So together they work quite nicely actually. And then I've also taken um well, that sounds like next door. Yeah, I just used a couple of little labs voice of God plugins to just add a bit of pretend bottom end to that. So and I just bring up the, the more distorted version for the little bit there. So yeah, fun with fun with a Casio. Right, oh, that works nice. But it just it does it, it brings it to life a little bit. What I like about when you crank that um, when you crank that Casio through um, when you really crank it. When I was messing around with it, I just hammered it. And actually, all we can hear is when you really crank it. All of a sudden, you hear this. You know, we might be able to hear it. I can try it. Let's have a look. We'll see if it works. Oh yeah. You get all this kind of fantastic dirt arriving. Right, which you know. is sort of subliminal, but yeah, which 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 is kind of wasn't. It's not supposed to be there. Completely un, completely uninvited, which made me think. It okay, to be well, in time though. In that case, I'll play a little shaker, and just to go along with that. Wow, well, that's right. high speed shaking. Is that real time? That is, is that a real time. That is a real time. It's a mini cabasa like this, one of those a little tiny one. And if you shake it like this, you can get the high speed. So you have to go against your hand. Right. Oh, Maybe okay. a small amount of beat. Shaking detective. Steve. Shaking Steve. That's me. <laughs> yeah, behind the green door. 
So one thing that I can see here from the session is you've got a kind of with and without version. So yeah. we can hear the difference. And are these mixed or are they just literally tracked and balanced? Well, the, the, the session, it, no, it's not mixed. This is the thing because I've got a version of the tune here. One's been recorded through the plugin. The other's been recorded just through the lovely mic amps. But the difference is, is that one sounds like it's half mixed and one sounds like it isn't. Well, let's have a listen to the, dr the sort of uh, the, the big section. Of okay, the so here's here's the here's the loud bit. Don't you need me, do you need so this is me, not through Century, it's just recorded. It's just flat re flat recorded. Don't you need me, do you need me, will you need me ever? So so what you're hearing there is a kind of is just. What I, it's what I would usually end up with. Don't you need me, do right. you need you know, but, I, but, but the difference is I'd have a load more plugins on the session to try and make it sound vibey. Because with the having used the Century plugin on the way in, it sounds like this. Don't you need me, do you need me? Right, so it sounds mixed, basically. It just sounds, it certainly sounds a lot closer right. to, to, to something you could play someone and go, hey, what do you think of this idea? Wow. You know, because they're, they're more likely to go, well, that sounds exciting. With the other one, I'd have to do quite a lot more. I'd have to go in on most of those channels, you know, probably add in an EQ, probably add in a compressor, yeah. probably some kind of distortion, then route it off to some kind of reverb, you know, and then all of a sudden there's 30 plugins. So uh, I'm, I'm a real convert to this, this way of working. The idea, right. Oh, that's an interesting. Well, I'm glad that giving you a review to do has actually changed your life a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I, 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 you're not having that back. <laughs> Uh, Steve, thank you so much for coming in and showing us how uh, the Sentry plugin worked and the channel strip worked. It's, as I say, it's the Apollo software 9.7. Uh, there is actually a 9.8. So if you went to 9.8, you'd be getting the Apollo, uh, the Sentry plugin now. Uh, 115 yeah. pounds, I think it's about 149 US dollars. Um, before we go, though, we should definitely hear the whole mix. So that'll be our play out, I think. But thank you very much for coming hey, in real and pleasure. joining us, Steve. See you next time. you need